Welcome back, everybody. Uh, our very last guest is none other than Esther Mungai, and she's an aeronautical engineer. She's been doing this for over 10 years, 13 years to be exact, and she's currently the senior engineer at Kenya Airways. Welcome. Santa Sana. How are you doing today, Esther? I'm good. Were you, I see you're in uniform. Love it. Power. Every time I see that, I'm like, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Fast track, business. Like, it's just the real deal. If you had to explain to a three-year-old child what you do for a living, what would you say? I would tell him that uh, what I do for a living, I fix aircrafts. It's more like being a mechanic of an aircraft. Okay, I get that. Yes. But uh, it's a little, just a little it's, bit uh, more, it's more complicated yes, than it is. just a mechanic for, for an aircraft. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your journey to where you are now. What, what did you want to be when you were younger? Uh, when I was a child, I wanted to be a musician, an okay. actor. Yeah. But the interest diverted to the fly, flying uh, airplanes. Yeah. So I was like, how do they keep them in the air? Uh, and how old were you when you started getting curious about this? About 12, 13. Whoa, and you're like, how, how do, do they, they stay up there? Yes. Okay, so at some point then, obviously this went from just, I'm, I'm interested, I'm curious, to I want to take this seriously. Yes. So what did you then have to study in, in uni? I studied aeronautical engineering okay. and, uh, for about three years. Yeah. Then I was taken up as an apprentice engineer in Kenya Airways because yeah. I had to do the uh, apprentice program for two years. Okay. And at the time, was that something that was common? A lot of people were talking about it or doing it? Yeah, we were quite a number. We were about 35 people in class. Yeah. Because we started as 50, then finished up about 35 in second year, about 24 or so. Okay. The third year. So, yeah, it was popular. So, when you say that you, you know, fix airplanes, Yes. What, what does that actually mean? If you're to take me through your day-to-day, day day, what does that look like? Uh, for now, I'm working on the light maintenance. Okay. These lights and heavy. Okay. That's what we call HX and CHX. Okay. So in HX, the light ones, we do maintenance for a day or two. Uh -huh. For the heavy maintenance, we actually do almost an overhaul of the whole aircraft for okay. about two, from two weeks to a month or more. Okay. depending on the stage that uh, the aircraft has reached. Right. Actually, it depends with the age of the aircraft. Uh, okay. So is that something that every time an aircraft flies, you have to do that? Or how does it work? Yes. Every time an aircraft flies, there's some maintenance that goes on. Because mm. we have to check if it's okay to fly. Does it have any technical issue? Yeah. We have to fuel it. We have to put the oil. We have to actually service it before it does fly insane for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what's the most interesting part about your job? The most fun part? It's very interesting. Yeah. Every day you can learn something new. Really? Yes. You but might like how so? You might know the whole system. Yeah. But uh, every day the updates the updates uh, of uh, the systems Every day they has to come up with something new, almost every right. day. Right. That means also for you, there has to be quite a, a lot of training taking place. A lot of training takes place. Because everything just changes. All everything is changing. Because yeah. nowadays what we have is uh, fly-by-wire aircrafts that use a lot of electrical, electronics, okay. not just mechanical part of it. Right. So and what does that actually mean? That means that they, they are slowly getting, uh, getting off uh, the mechanical workings of the aircraft okay. and slowly introducing more software to the aircraft. Ah. So software updates happen, um, modifications are happening. That means your job literally is, tr is changing every, I mean, I guess every, every year there has to be something new that you're tra having to learn. Yes. Because whereas maybe you went to school for the actual mechanics and clunks and bolts and uh, I'm imagining that's what you yes, learned. That's, that's what now I you're having to understand software because maybe now you're not flying the plane. Yes. It's sort of just cruising and landing itself. Yes. <gasps> Things change so much. Things change. It's, it's a bit uh, more complicated than just cruising yeah. and landing. Right. Okay. But it's so interesting. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, and what would you say is the most challenging part? Sometimes the working hours, yeah. sometimes. But uh, the, the law takes care of that. Uh, they have a certain number of hours that you can work in a certain number of hours that you can rest. Right. But uh, sometimes you know you have to deliver to the customers. Yeah. So 
a bit you can stretch a bit yeah yeah interesting you've got to stretch yeah. yourself do you ever travel or do you ever fly on the plane alongside the pilots yes we do we this is what is called uh, flight accompanying okay you just uh, accompany the aircraft especially african region because ah. of the um, because of the facilities yeah and maybe they don't have um, trained engineers like kenya airways so you accompany the flight to ensure that uh, you bring it back home mm. take care of it fully right. the normal servicing right and ensure you come back home okay yeah. so i've got i've got to ask you about this because i keep hearing it in movies mm -hmm. and i hear about it like in news stories and stuff like that but um the black box is that under your docket the black box the black box the black box is actually like a flight recorder because the reason it's called a black box yeah because when you're retrieving the flight recorder yeah there must have been something that has happened so it's not actually like a black box no it's not a black box okay <laughs> no, i'm just like <laughs> exposing myself on tv <laughs> I don't know if other people are watching and like, guy, 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 Sharon, how are you messing up like that? I thought it was like a, I don't know, like a little compartment hidden somewhere and it's recording all the things. Yeah, it does record everything. But is it black in color? No, it's not. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, it's not black, but it's a box. <laughs> yes. It and is. it records it everything. records everything. And when you mean recording everything, um, is that like the conversations? Is that like the flight uh, taking off and like... Everything. Even the conversations? The parameters of the plane as it takes off, lands, cruising, it, it records everything. And also ah. the, the conversations in the cockpit. So is that, part of also, is that part of what you have to maintain and make sure it's like working and everything is Yes, in? yes. It's part of what you maintain. But uh, also in engineering, mm. we are classified in two. There's what we call airframe and engines, and then there's avionics team. Mm. Uh, I am... Okay airframe and engines engineer okay, okay. then there's the avionics guy who does the maintenance ah. of the okay the, of the flight like yeah recorder. okay yes. okay thanks for debunking that yes <laughs> i am now the wiser um so what is it that you wish you knew about this industry before you got in just in case people are watching and are like give us the tips what i wish i knew is that everything takes time mm. everything has its own time if it's getting your licenses, getting your approvals. Because I remember when I was young, I would get so worried if, if I don't pass one exam. Because mm. you have to go through a lot of exams. Right. So you're keeping people. In yes, yeah. especially the most difficult ones are the oral exams. Because mm. you have to read and narrate. And then there's the skill tests. So the oral, if you're not very good at it or you can't explain something very well, they'll tell you, you know what, um, you need to, to read this and understand it. So you get very frustrated. But they're actually doing you a favor because it will help you in the future. Yeah. And they need you to understand these yeah, things. Right. So, you know, don't be frustrated. It's a journey. Yeah. Enjoy it. Right. Yes. Um, do you ever find yourself in like high stress situations when it comes to to the aircraft and, and your and your work? I, I just got curious um, uh, because I also watched this movie called Captain Sally. I, I'm sure you've heard of it, and it was, I mean, incredible to me. Just thinking about all those things you have to consider, and is the flight working? And is it? Is it ever as stressful as that? If you've not watched the movie, I guarantee you, you'll love it. Tom Hanks is the lead actor in it, and he does an amazing job. Yes. Um, so are there any high stress uh, yes. situations? Can you take us through one or two? One or two. Yeah. Yes, there are very high stress situations mm -hmm. because you, uh, as at my role currently, I have to make a decision very fast mm -hmm. on what we're going to do. There are so many manuals and guidelines that will help you make that decision. Yeah. And you have to actually know what do they say yeah at the back of your mind right is it this right or this wrong what do we do because maybe there's a technical issue that mm -hmm. has happened so you, those fast decisions yeah. can stress you out sometimes right. yeah but um, as you said keep calm keep calm yeah yeah because you can't be like oh my gosh where's a manual i think it, and then start reading it you have to really have understood it internalized Absolutely. it i guess that's why you have so many so many things you have to read but at times um even when making that decisions 
the law require, requires you to read those manuals. Yeah. So you find yourself, give me the manual very fast. Yeah. Let us check this very fast. What are you doing? So because right. we need to, it's an on-time performance kind of job. Yeah, you have to Clients be are waiting, on. Customers are waiting, others are connecting. So you have to be alert. Really on top of things. Yes. Um, so you've been in this industry 13 years now, yes. and I'm sure you've witnessed a lot of changes. You even touched on it light, uh, slightly, and you talked about like uh, software and all, all these updates being one of them. Is there something else that you've you've noticed about the industry and, and, and in terms of how it's changing and how it could affect people who are looking to come into the industry maybe five years from now? Five years from now, the technology will have changed completely. Mm. As I said, um, nowadays they are moving more from mechanical to electronics. Mm. The technology is improving every day, so a lot of young people who are coming in might need to have some more computer skills mm than us. Mm. There's a, an evolution that is going on, mm. but it's a good one because it's improved maintenance, mm. improved uh, pilots, yeah. so more skills will be required. More skills will be more required. Skills, but it will be easier because the kids nowadays are on top of things with their phones, with programs, with coding, yeah. but uh, they, they'll still get some things uh, mechanical. Right. You can never change that. Yeah. You get more things electronics. Right. So you are in what I would assume is a male-dominated space. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is yes. it? Yeah. Actually, it is yeah. male-dominated aeronautical engineering, and and I'm curious to know how it's been like for you as a woman um, to be, you know, a senior engineer, um, 13 years in the industry. What is how how has that been for you? It's tough at first, but you get used to it. You gel in. Okay. Yeah, because. There might, you might find some stereotyping, mm. which is not very, very uncommon, it's common. Yeah, so it's, very, it's common to find like some kind of stereotyping. Yes, when, at the beginning, but once okay. you, you're able to do your work and you're very dependent, that, that kind of stereotyping, you even forget about it. Uh. Because now you're just, you're part of the team and you're supposed to deliver. Your work speaks for yes. itself. Your work speaks yeah. for itself. Okay. So right. after some time, you just, flow. All right, so do you have any last words or encouraging words for anyone who's looking to come into this space or maybe even for the parents whose children have been talking about it? Mm -hmm. What would you want to say to them about being an aeronautical engineer? It's, it's a good job. Yeah. It's uh, very satisfying. They should come and join us because we need more and more engineers yeah. because uh, the transport industry is moving from just the yeah. roads to more air. Yeah. And let's develop Africa. Yeah. They should come in. All right. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's show and that you learned um, something new about an industry and a career that you didn't know much about. I, for one, that the black box isn't actually black, <laughs> which I can't believe all this time. I thought it was a black box. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, everybody. And thank you to Park Inn by Radisson for lending us their beautiful space, as always. We'll be back very soon with more from Living With Us. Bye, everybody.